So here is section 4.2, the exponential distribution. It has a parameter, lambda greater than zero. Remember, parameter means some number that defines your distribution. And the exponential distribution is useful for times, like waiting times, failure time, lifetime, life expectancy, etc. You have a probability density function, PDF, f of x equals lambda e to the negative lambda x. x is always greater than zero, which makes sense because you're often modeling time, and time has to be positive. Your cumulative distribution function is there as well. Expected value is 1 over lambda, and variance is 1 over lambda squared. So here's two examples of what that looks like. So here's our PDF for x distributed exponentially 1. That means that lambda equals 1. Notice that my smaller times are more likely, and then it's less and less likely as the time gets longer, which kind of makes sense. Like if you're waiting for a bus or something, you're hoping to wait a smaller amount of time, or you probably wouldn't be there quite as early. Or this one's the PDF for an exponential of a 0.5, so that means lambda equals 0.5. So they're all kind of this downward curve, and just depending on what lambda is, that defines how steep they are. Now, the exponential distribution has one interesting property called the memoryless property. And this is interesting because it means that knowing you've already waited five minutes for something, that doesn't actually change the expected time that you have left to wait. So that means, and this doesn't apply to all situations in real life, you only use the exponential distribution when that does apply. So it would be like saying, okay, I went to the doctor and I already waited five minutes, that doesn't actually change how long I'm expecting to keep waiting. So it's probably not really a good example because at a doctor's office, hopefully my time goes down as I wait, right? Okay, so it does make sense in some scenarios, but not everything. So a memoryless property would make sense to model the failure of an electronic component due to random voltage fluctuation. Because in that case, it's just a random thing, so it's not really going to be affected by how much time you've already gone. But the memoryless property doesn't make sense when you're, say, modeling the time to failure of a component due to wear out, because the longer you use it, the more likely you are to wear out. So here's our example. The post-diagnosis survival times in months for victims of a particular type of cancer are given by x, and x has an exponential distribution for 1 over 15, and that means that lambda equals 1 over 15, and it is exponential. So first, what would your PDF be? So little f of x, our formula on the previous page is just lambda e to the negative lambda x. And all we have to do is plug in lambda, so we'll do 1 over 15, e to the negative 1 over 15 times x. And it's always for x greater than or equal to 0. So finding these things is pretty easy when you have all of your formulas. Find the CDF. We could integrate our PDF, but instead let's just save ourselves some time and look at our formula. 1 minus e to the negative lambda x. So in our case, it will be 1 minus e to the negative 1 over 15 times x, again for x greater than or equal to 0. Now, someone might ask you a question like, what is the median survival time? So what does median mean? Median means find the middle. Or in our case, you, well, every case, <laughs> sorry. What does that mean for us? You set the CDF, capital F of X, equal to 0.5 and solve for X. Okay. Because your median or middle means that you have half of the area above the median and half the area below the median. So finding the median is just like finding percentiles, it's just the 50th percentile. And someone was emailing me and asking me, can you do this without actually having to find the CDF? Could you just do it from the PDF or is there just a way to put it in your calculator? 
and I've never seen a way to put it in your calculator. Anytime you want to find percentiles, anytime you want to find a median, you have to do it from the CDF. So in our case, we'll find our CDF and set it equal to zero. So we'll set capital F of X equal to 0.5 and solve for X. So we'll do 1 minus our E to the negative 115 times X equals 0.5 and solve for X. Let's see, I'll subtract 1 from both sides. So we have negative E, negative 115X equals negative 0.5. Divide by both sides by negative, so I just get a positive now. And let's see, to get rid of that E, we would take the natural log of both sides. So we'll have negative 115X equals natural log of 0.5. And then that means that x would be, let's see, we divide by negative 1 over 15, or multiply both sides by negative 15, so negative 15 natural log of 0.5. Or x equals 10.3972 months. So that means half the people, or half the people will last more than 10.39 months, half of them will last less than that. Or if you try to find the halfway point, it would be at 10.4 months. Okay, I kind of skipped a lot of steps there on that solving, made that brief, but that's kind of back to our algebra class. Number four, what is the probability that a patient will live at least six months past the diagnosis? So we're looking for the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. Now if you want to use the CDF, CDFs are always probability of x is less than or equal to something, so we have to use the complement rule. So 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 6. So that's the complement rule there. But if I use the complement rule, then this probability that x is less than or equal to 6, that's just our CDF. So it's just going to be 1 minus the CDF of 6 months. And now you just plug it into your CDF, which here's our CDF here. So 1 minus E to the negative 1 15th times 6. So we get 0 0.6703. And what is the probability that we'll live between 2 and 13 months? Well, if you have two bounds for your probabilities, you do the CDF of the upper bound minus the CDF of the lower bound. That's always what you do if you have two bounds. This looks really complicated when we try and plug it into our CDF. Because we have 1 minus E to the negative 1 15th, and we'll do that for both of them. So 1 minus E to the negative 1 15th times 13 minus, and then we plug in the 2, 1 minus e to the negative 1 15th times 2. But we get 0.4548. Okay, now with plugging in our CDF, you just plug in the top bound, plug in the lower bound. If you wanted to use your PDF instead, you would just to find the probability, you just always integrate and you'll just go from 2 to 13 because those are the numbers we're interested in. And you integrate the PDF. So in our case, we'd integrate from 2 to 13. What is our formula for a PDF? 
it was 1 15th e to the negative 1 15th x dx. Just integrate it and you'll get the same answer. So you can choose which way you want to do all of these problems. Just keep in mind we like the CDF because we don't have to integrate. See, six is what is our expected survival time? Or what would be the average survival time? Our formula says just one over lambda. So one over one over 15 gives me 15. So we expect, or the average is, that they'll live about 15 months. And what is the standard deviation survival time? Well, if you're looking for standard deviation, you have to do square root of variance. So square root of our variance is 1 over lambda squared. So square root of 1 over lambda is 1 over 15. Square that. And you just get back to 15 months. So this is an interesting distribution because your expected value and standard deviation are always the same. And number eight says, if you know that you've already lived two months, what is the probability that you live at least another six months? So that if tells me we're working with a conditional probability. So we're saying, if you know you've already lived two months, so lived two months, okay, then what's the probability you live at least another six months? So the probability that x is greater than or equal to six. So again, this is our conditional probability. But what was that special property for the exponential distribution? For the exponential distribution, we said that it is memoryless. And in fact, it doesn't matter how long you've already waited, it doesn't affect the future probabilities. And so it turns out that this probability that x is greater than or equal to 6, if you already know you live two months, is just equal to the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6, which we found up above. That we found that it is 0 0.6703. And so what this means for us is that it actually doesn't matter that we've already lived the two months with this specific type of cancer. The probability of us living another six months doesn't change. So I'm saying it doesn't matter that you've already lived two months, the probability of living another six months doesn't change. Now again, this is specific to this one type of cancer, to this one type of distribution. Other things don't have that property.